LED light strip is fantastic for a wide range of lighting applications, but today we're going to go a stage further as we look at the Macau Cobb LED light strip by Rover. Ooh. I don't often get an ooh out of you, Gary. No, Cobb. I'm all intrigued. What is this Cobb? Well, Cobb, or chip on board, which basically means an incredibly large amount of LED chips placed on the strip, so much so that you think that light is a continuous line. I've got some in the tank here right. that we'll come to later, but let's have a closer look at what I mean when we think of cob. So we've got some down here, yes? Yeah, so let's start looking at our traditional uh, LED light strip that we're used to seeing. So we often talk about how many LEDs you can get per meter. So yeah. here's, these are quite widely spaced apart, and here's some uh, closer spaced apart. So generally more LEDs means more light. Yep. However, the downside of that is obviously in some applications you can obviously see the spots of light. Yeah, we can. If I can just move it around a little, we can see those. It's blue as well, isn't it? Considering we've got like a, a yellow phosphor on the top there, isn't it? Yeah, so the camera is actually picking up how LEDs work. So underneath an LED is actually a blue LED chip which has applied a yellow phosphor, which together create the white light. And so blue and yellow make white, yeah? Yeah, so then let's step to our cob strip. So I'll have a look at it unlit here. So this is an IP67 version. So you can see this continuous line of phosphor. Right. And underneath there are the LED chips. So if you're looking closely on this one that has been dimmed incredibly low, you can actually see those blue LED chips. Yeah, you can, and there is a lot of them in there, isn't there, when it's dimmed down. So we're not seeing that dotting effect, are we? So occasionally you can look up and see that dotting effect. With this one, we won't see it? No, we won't see it. Here's one that's fully illuminated. Oh yeah. You so. can see our continuous line of light. So is that why you've installed this chip on board, or carb, I like the sound of that, above our heads here then? Because obviously as I look up now, and I look back down at the camera, I haven't got that dotting effect, have I? Yeah, and that's it. So that's, uh, Obviously you can use it in applications where you don't want to see the dots and a lot of people yeah. don't like to see them. But if you just have a closer look at what I've done above our heads, yeah. I've been busy. Let's have a uh, so I've installed uh, two rows. I've got the warm white and the uh, cool white, so 3000 and 4000 Kelvin there. So we may do some color tuning uh, in the future, but there's an incredible amount of light coming out of the cob strip, which there means is. you can use it for what I'd call proper lighting applications. So think of offices, restaurants, Things like that, where you also probably want a good colour rendering as well. Right, okay. Um, so for the keen eye amongst you on that though, because I've just panned around the room, yes, I did install the festoon lighting in here, so we were <laughs> using that previously. And I'd like to suggest what we've got now is a lot better. However, obviously you can see the chips, mm -hmm. and obviously they still make them robust, so there must be another application where we actually want the chips. Yeah, so obviously, yeah, robust are making both. We've got the Macau, which is our chip on board. We've also got the Vegas, so I'd suggest there's a casino-inspired theme or casino a city theme running through this uh, product uh, naming and we like that instead of part numbers yes <laughs> uh, but i've also installed the uh, vegas in the cove behind us because oh, right, okay. in applications like that where you can't see the led strip yeah you can you can obviously uh, use the individual discrete led solution you can play around with how many LEDs you have per meter to get the light output right as well. Yeah, so that links into what you say in a lot of our videos on LED strip, it's smuggling lights in. So while we've smuggled the light in here, there's no point in having the chip on board there, is it? So it remember that more conventional style of LED strip. However, when we start thinking about the light levels from it, and then you've got maybe the ones where the chips are seen, we often put a diffuser on the top. What's the effect then? Yeah, quite a significant effect. Yeah, so you're right. So people will use a diffuser for two things, sometimes environmental protection, Right. Yep, so you don't want the LEDs to get damaged and sometimes it's easy on the uh, discrete solution you know imagine you're doing some cleaning you can go along and you can damage the LEDs the good thing about the IP20 version I've got here is that silicon coating across the, the phosphor coating of the silicon it's very smooth lines right okay yeah so you possibly don't need an extrusion for mechanical protection. We'd always suggest an extrusion to manage heat, increase longevity, yeah. uh, things like that. Or if you, you know, if you want to build off site and take it, that's where extrusions come in. Loads of profiles you can plaster in and do all those things. But sometimes people use the extrusion with a diffuser to get rid of the dotting effect. Yeah, on the eyes. Now I'm going to demonstrate here how much a difference just putting a diffuser is in terms of light output or reducing light output. Ah, so you're suggesting then that once we sit the diffuser on there, we're actually, whatever we've designed that light to be, we're going to change that light level. Yeah, and so we're using the diffuser to try and get rid of dots. We're not here, we're just going to put it in front of our cob LED strips. Okay, so you can put something up here, yeah. Yeah, okay. well, I'll just get the light meter here going in front of us here. 
Okay. So we can see, hold on, let's go right in the middle of the bench. Okay, so don't move it, so there we go. So right in the middle of the bench, and we've got a light level of? Yeah, about 950 lux, okay. which, you know, if you think in a typical office environment, a consultant engineer will often design, you'll often hear 500 lux on a working plane. Yep. We'll call okay. this our working plane, not that much work necessarily goes on here. Um, and I'll bring in uh, this diffuser strip. All right, so, so you're going to clip that. Let's, let's see, you clip that on there. I'll bring it in down here and see what happens to that light level. So, you're, so you're over the top of our LED strip in here. And obviously there's our light meter. It hasn't moved and we've dropped it down. We've lost more than, well, 140 lux, haven't we? Yeah, significantly. So it, that's actually a big difference. 10, 20, 30 percent, depending on it. And obviously sometimes the further apart those LEDs are, the more dense you go with the diffuser, which increases the light output loss. So it's, uh, again, if you, so if you're using LED strips for uh, what I'd call real plotting applications in terms of you want to do functional work uh, under them, a cob strip is obviously a fantastic choice for that. Yeah, and again, you, you mentioned on it as well, wiping across the top of anything when you've got those chips exposed. I've done it myself, I've knocked a few off. Yeah, certainly, <laughs> yeah, it, it, and, yeah uh, it happens to us all. Um, but also, if that's not enough, so obviously you've got the IP20. Right. There's also the outdoor version as well. So this is IP67. It's been sitting in this tank for a week. Um, because also along with this Macau came this easy connector system that we've used here to do the connections. And that connection system is absolutely fantastic. Even I could use it. Yeah. And we'll recommend you check out the link in the description of the eye above I had to see how you do that. Yeah, that is fantastically easy. I'll just switch it off so you can see how this is made up. So again, you can see the, uh, the cob LED strip under there. It just has an additional uh, silicon layer and the high strength 3M adhesive tape on the back. And that gets you up to IP67 then, doesn't it? Yeah, that is it. And there's obviously the other connectors. You can make joining bits and inline connections on this as well. Okay, super simple. I recommend you check that video out. Yeah, it is. Now, uh, obviously if we're thinking IP67, we're thinking outdoors. Actually, there may be instances where we actually go too much light. Yeah. Too much light because there is, depending on the colour temperature, up to 1460 lumens per metre. And that's what we're lighting this room with in here now. And we've already shown we're at nearly a thousand lux on the bench. So you may have to turn it down. So is this the Dr. Emmett Brown back of the DeLorean look we've got down here, is it? Yeah, so along with, uh, yeah, along with the uh, Macau LED strip, um, Rob has sent us a range of controllers, uh, which I've connected up here. Um, so we've got uh, a one you can use with a smartphone app. Uh, on Wi-Fi, that was incredibly easy to set up. That's not normally something we say when we think about apps. Something I say. I've got a wireless controller here. Um, so this is mains powered, but it transmits uh, wirelessly, uh, obviously, to the uh, receiver module. So there's no cabling interconnection between these then? No, no. And then I've got this remote control version here. Uh, again, you can see. So that's on the regular um, Vegas strip. So do that again for me. Yeah, so I can just dim that down. So we're on this one yeah. here. Yeah. Just that one there at the top. And you're adjusting that. Okay, yeah. that's good. So then I repeat it with our wall mounted controller that I've got attached to our uh, cob strip. Right, so that's going to change that one. So in the cool white. So, so you go across to the cool white one there now. Yep. We'll see, yeah. It's, okay. I've dimmed out until go back up again. Go on, give us it then. Give us the beans on it. Okay, so that's at full brightness, yeah? Yeah. So that's, uh, yeah. So if you, if you are outdoors uh, and you're using that, because obviously you don't want to see uh, spots from a conventional lead strip, uh, you don't want to use an extrusion. Um, yeah, you can obviously put them a camera, but you probably would need to uh, turn it down a bit. Yeah, because of the super brightness that yeah. those uh, extra LEDs so, give you. And obviously if you're dimming LEDs, uh, you're also saving energy. Uh, at full power, this uh, LED strip is 14 watts per meter, which obviously, if you can do your maths, puts you above 100 lumens per watt. A uh, few other points to note about its application. Uh, the reel itself is a 20 meter reel. Right. And I found as I was working with that doing a square, you get halfway down the reel, you get a little reminder that you need to order some more. I suspect that's for the cutting stations that uh, Robus have it out in the wholesalers. Uh, but one important point to note, this is uh, resistive uh, controlled LEDs. And at the power levels we're operating, obviously you will get a voltage drop. Uh, the strip itself, maximum length per power supply, should be uh, five meters. Uh, after that, you'll have to run the strip in parallel. Oh, right, okay, so it's pretty technical, but thank you for that. Technical, but so what I did in this room, so on round here, we've got uh, an, an eight, uh, eight meter length. Uh, so I just fed it from uh, one corner and went out in two directions. Oh, so on okay. each leg, I've therefore got 
uh, four meters, I've got all my maths in there, and I've paired them back up to the two uh, Robus uh, LED power supplies. Again, constant motors, 24 volts uh, behind you there. Okay. And obviously uh, one, on the, uh, one on the cool white and one on the uh, warm white. Yeah, and you can see the two different colors as well. Yeah. You're quite impressed with that. It's twice you've referenced it in this video, so I think you're quite pleased with yourself for this I, one, aren't you? Gordon? I am quite pleased because you know we've got quite a low height ceiling in here, and obviously it's a great solution for that, isn't it? I haven't got any ceiling clutter. No. That's an 11 millimeter profile of standard in. I'm not going to put the diffuser on. It's not causing us any glare issues here. I think this, yeah, this Macau Cobb strip light is is a go-to for me. Yeah, and it is, yeah, when you can just see it compared to the dots, and we, we're not suggesting that's a, a bad thing, it's all about where you're going to implement your LED strip, but for us, this has solved an amazing problem for us. Well, is it new to you? Had you heard the word Cobb before this? Chip on board before we started this video. If you had, please leave your comments. What are you doing with it at the minute? If you hadn't, have you thought about some applications it can use for this robust LED strip? Please leave them all below, and I'm sure Gordon, and not me, will get back to all of them. Gary will get back to his call on the Cobb.